Ms. Trailer is a U.S. Army retiree and has been a Texas notary public for almost 10 years. She is also a 2018 National Notary Association Notary of the Year Special Honoree and a contributing writer for the American Association of Notaries. We are pleased to welcome her. Enjoy your session. Good afternoon, everybody. I kind of feel like I'm at a disadvantage because you guys just got some eating. So please don't fall asleep on me. I'll try to keep it interesting. Okay. Uh, how many active notary signing agents do we have out here today? Active meaning this is something that you do on a regular basis. Okay. Good, good. How many of you have been doing it for more than a year? Good, more than five years. All right, so we got some experts here. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so what they asked me to do today was discuss uh, the common notary signing agent errors that uh, the companies come across and also discuss some best practices and um, your, our responsibility, I'm not going to say your responsibility because I'm a signing agent also. So our responsibilities as a notary signing agents, okay? And if you have any questions, ask. I'll just throw the little thing at you and you can ask, <laughs> ask a question so you can ask it loud enough for everybody to hear. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so we have people in here that don't even know what a signing agent is. Oh, you just passed the test. Okay, so we got some newbies. Okay, so a notary signing agent is uh, somebody that hopefully has gone through the training to uh, become certified to do loan closings. Loan closings, real estate loan closings. Okay, there is a need Huh? Say that again? Oh, okay. I, I, I forgot what it was. But anyway. <laughs> so how many people have never, didn't even know what a signing agent was? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, Liz is going to help me with the, uh, with the, no, I'm not a good thrower. I don't want to hit somebody in the head and then get sued for something. So I just let Liz come up here. Okay, so we have a lot of people that don't even know what a notary signing agent is. So what you do is you go through the training and you learn how to actually go out to people's homes, their place of business, uh, also to sit in uh, title companies and just do loan signings, close real estate um, transactions for people. And you get paid to do this. So it's a really good deal if you know what you're doing. Because it's really easy to get in trouble if you don't know what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. How do you become a signing agent? Okay, you see me after class, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to get too off track, but you do need to uh, complete some training. It's not something that you want to go out there and say, okay, I'm a notary, so I can do this. You really do want to get some training because that's where a lot of the mistakes come in. But good questions. So again, we're going to discuss uh, the most common notary signing agent errors, the best practices, what our responsibilities are, and also share some insight. So I already found out who knows what a signing agent is, who's actually doing this. How many of you are doing it full time? Oh, I have very few that are doing it full time. It is, um, 
it's almost like stepping out on faith when you decide to do this full time. Because that means you're giving up your, your full time job. And this is something that you're going to be relying on to pay your bills. But it can be done. There's a lot of notaries out there that are doing this notary signing agent full time as a business. Now, one of the things that I've noticed when it comes to the notary signing agent errors is that we already know that to become a Texas notary signing, to become a Texas notary, there's no required training. But even though there's no required training, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, that you don't, that you want to try to do something and not know what you're doing. You need to get the training. You need to know what you're doing. And so if you don't get the training, that's just going to lead you to making errors when you become a notary signing agent. And believe it or not, even to become a notary signing agent, there's no required training. It's suggested training. But you have some notaries out there that are doing the signing agent work and have not been trained to do it. So that's where you get a lot of your, um, your mistakes. So the best thing to do is if you decide to become a notary signing agent, to treat it as a career or a business. Treat it as something that you're going to invest in, that you're going to work hard in. Learn what you're doing, because that's going to be so important. I, com I commend all of you guys for attending this training today. This morning, we had the Texas Notary training. That was excellent training. And again, because Texas doesn't have any required training, a lot of people will start doing notary work without getting the training. And it's so important that you be trained. Also, when you decide that you want, are going to become a signing agent, again, you want to get the training. And the proper training is going to cut down on your errors. Now, OK, so we're talking about errors. So the number one error that I came across when it came to notary signing agents is that the notary signing agents were not reading the instructions. Now, for those of you who are doing signing agent work, how many times are you going to receive an assignment and there are no instructions? There's always going to be instructions. There's going to be instructions for the instructions. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of instructions. So one of the things you want to do is make sure that you go through all of those instructions line by line to make sure that you're doing what you were hired to do. And if you don't read those instructions, then you're going to miss something. Now, a worst case scenario, what happens if you don't get any instructions? What should you do? Call and get them. What you're going to ask? Somebody said ask. What are you going to ask? What are your instructions? But do you have specific questions that you want answered? Like, go ahead, sir. You want to know the contact information. Who? That's okay. That's okay. So you're going to ask questions like the contact information. Who do I contact? Who does the signer contact in case the signer has questions? Because nine times out of ten when you're doing the loan closing, the signer is going to have some questions. Who said that? <laughs> you are so right. Sometimes they are very specific about the color of ink that you can use when you're doing a notary sign, when you're doing a closing. She told me I had to repeat. I said sometimes they're very specific about the color of ink that you use in your transaction. Exactly. Exactly. 
So things that might not seem that important to you are important to the person that hired you, the entity that hired you. So you need to read those instructions. You need to go through those instructions line by line to make sure that you're following the instructions when you're doing that clothing. That's part of your responsibility because when you accept that assignment, you're saying, okay, I am a certified notary signing agent. I know what I'm doing. I'm able to close, close this with no problems. That's what you're saying. And that's what the borrower, the person that's signing, is expecting from you and also the people that hire you. Make sure you understand the instructions. If you're reading through those instructions and something doesn't make sense to you, just pick up the phone and call. It's okay to ask a question. They would prefer that you, the title companies, the signing companies, would prefer that you call them and ask a question rather than assume and do something wrong. So it's okay to pick up the phone and call. And you need to know, like the gentleman said earlier, who to call. And all that's gonna be in your instructions. So you can see how important your instructions are. So make sure you understand the uh, instructions. As I said before, when you accept this assignment, you're saying you're gonna complete this assignment and you're gonna do it right. And that you know what you're doing and you can be uh, counted upon to get this done correctly. Missing documents. This is another error that's complained about from the hiring entities. So let's say you completed a closing, you've sent all your documents back, and now you're just waiting for that check to come in. <laughs> then a couple of days later, you get a phone call from your hiring party and you're happy because you, you think your check is on the way. But they're calling you because they say a document is missing. How should you handle that? Because how you handle this is gonna make or break you as a notary signing agent. What document is missing? Get it right back to you. Say that again? Oh. You'll ask them what document's missing and um, how can I get it back to you right away? What do I need to do? That's a good answer. That's what I would do too. Just check to make sure you actually received it. Check to make sure that you actually received it. Say it again. Okay. Just check to make sure that you actually received the document in your package. Okay, well what if you didn't receive the document? Huh? If you didn't receive a document. I mean, it still got to get done, even if you didn't receive a document. But if you're well trained and you know what you're doing, it's going to depend on the document itself. Like, say, for instance, you got a deed, a, a deed of trust. You know how deed of trust can be 12 pages, it can be 30 pages. The last, the second to the last page is the signature page. And then the last page is the notary page, right? So say you didn't get those last two pages of the deed of trust. And you sent that entire package back with those last two pages missing. They didn't send you those last two pages. So you just sent the whole package back without those last two pages. Whose fault is that? It's yours, because you're supposed to know what you're doing. So even though they didn't send you those pages, it's still your fault. Because you know, as a trained notary signing agent, that the deed of trust in the state of Texas, or probably any state, is going to have to be signed by the borrower and notarized. The signature is going to have to be notarized, right? So, so part of what I was going to say was part of the initial <coughs> era one 
I, I can't hear you. Part of the first error one is if, if you missing documents is when you have that initial conversation. If you've reviewed your packet, then you'll say, hey, this is missing. So that's your first opportunity to catch um, that a document or something is missing is when you're going through and reviewing your documents, your packets. And then the, the next thing, of course, would be um, if it's just your the notary, we have our standard uh, jurat or certificates, so we can send those unless they're looking for specific from their agency, then we ask them to send that to us or we just attach a notary certificate to it. <laughs> Does somebody else have some, something to say? Oh, okay. <laughs> if we're sent documents electronically, do we, can we bill the company that sent them for printing? It's your business. You can do what you want to do with it. You know, I can't say, no, you, can do, you can't do that. Yes, you can. You know, you run your business the way you see fit. Okay. So, yes. You should make sure that you have all the documents that you need to complete that signing. And that's where the training comes in. What about if, you, uh, if you're printing the documents and a document prints out all garbly and computer mess, and you send that back to, the, to your hiring entity? That's not too professional. What did you say? Did you call your IT consultant? <laughs> well, most of us do have a home business, so we might not have a home uh, IT consultant. So the best thing I would suggest to do is become uh, very familiar with your printer. Learn how to work that printer, because that's going to make or break you also. If you're not able to print correctly when it comes to those signings, because you're going to be doing a lot of printing as a notary signing agent, and you need to have a reliable printer, one that prints correctly. And a lot of times you're going to be printing letter size pages and legal pages. So you need to have a printer that can handle a high volume of printing. So again, it's our responsibility to make sure that we have, read all the instructions that we get with our closing documents. A lot of times they will also have instructions on there on how they want the documents printed. Also, the printer settings that you should set when you get ready to print your documents. So you make sure that you print them correctly. And also make sure that you have all the required documents. So after you print your documents, you need to go through them. And I know some of these uh, loan packages can be 300 plus pages, but you need to go through each and every page, make sure everything printed correctly, make sure everything printed out, make sure nothing was cut off, make sure you have the signing uh, page for each document, the notarization page for each document. That's your responsibility to make sure you have everything that you need to complete the assignment. Another error is missing signatures or initials. It's easy to do. You get a big package and you got a whole bunch of signatures plus a whole bunch of initials that need to be done. I'm guilty of it myself. I have missed initials and signatures. So what I do now, even though I've been doing this for a while, is I'll use sticky notes and I'll place little stickies everywhere they need to sign and everywhere they need to initial. That way, it reminds me that, okay, when I come to that page, that person needs to sign here, that person needs to initial there. It just makes it easier for me. One thing you have to remember if you're using stickies is when you go back through the documents to review them, take those stickies off. <laughs> you don't want to send those loan documents back to the, uh, your hiring ent entity with those stickies on them. And plus, those stickies are reusable. <laughs> so, you know, I always save mine and use them again. 
But that's going to help you cut down on missing signatures and missing initials. Because if you miss a signature, miss an initial, and then you send the documents back, you're going to have to go back out there, right? Because whose fault was it? Yours. So you're going to have to go back out there and get those, that missing signature and that miss, missing initial. And you're not going to get paid for that second trip. And it's not like something that you say, OK, I can get that done next week. You need to correct that mistake right away. So actually, it could cost you money. OK, so we talked about the stickies. And another thing, too, is to make sure that, yes, Liz. May I tell them a story about a mistake of mine? Yes, you may. I get to use this. Mm -hmm. So it's so cool. OK, when she's talking about mistakes being costly, and keep in mind, I've been doing this for a while, and I train, all right? So uh, several months ago, I had a signing that was in Burleson, and that's about 40 minutes from me. I don't typically take signings that far away, but when they came, when, when orders come through, we have, I use SnapDocs, have the opportunity to say yes or no, and if you say no, they want to know why. Is the fee too low? I said the fee, it was too far, and it's how much will you charge to go? So I put my little amount in there just knowing they were just going to go on by me. But they didn't. <laughs> so it's like, OK, now I got to go. Because I said this is what it would take for me to go. So we have to, you know, we have, our word is our bond. So I said I would, so I went. It was at a real estate office. By the time I got to the real estate office, I had a call from the hiring company telling me the documents were wrong. They were going to resend the documents. They were sending them to the real estate office. They were going to print them for me. OK, that was OK. I got the new documents. Um, they printed the documents for me. I went into the closing. I closed the lady. She was from out of town, living with a relative in a little town called uh, Crowley. All right, so now there is no copy to be left with the borrower, right? So I asked the realtor to make a copy for the borrower, not thinking that there was anything wrong with asking the realtor to do it. When she handed the package back to me, and she said, well, I had to separate the legal from the eight and a half by 11. So I looked at her, but I said, OK. And so I took the package, and I, I went home, and I scanned the package over to my hiring company. Now I'm waiting for them to say, it's OK for you to drop the package. Instead, he called and said, Liz, you're missing 18 pages. Oh. I said, what? So of course, what that meant was I had to take the copy that I had and go one by one through that 150 pages. And look, y'all, it wasn't 18 pages in one you know, consecutive. It was throughout the package. Somehow, when the real estate agent separated that package, she mixed up the pages. We don't know what happened to the 18 pages. Right. So anyway. Like Phyllis said, that was my fault. The lesson there, number one, is never ask a real estate agent to make copies for you. No, 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 that's nothing bad. I'm not saying it's anything bad about real estate agents, but you look at what they are accustomed, the copies that they are accustomed to making on their equipment. It's eight and a half by 11 only. Yeah. You know, they're not accustomed to doing that uh, dual trace stuff. But anyway. I'm, I'm like, where, uh, uh, what's your name from, from the police d department? Fire department. Fire department. What's your name? I'm Allison. Yeah, I'm be like Allison now. You know how that story keep going and going and going. But this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it'd be all right for me to pick on you. I knew that was a good story. But anyway, this is what happened. So now, I call, keep in mind, this lady was from 
she was moving here from Nebraska somewhere. So I had to call her. And I said, meet me at the FedEx office, because I had to print off those 18 pages. Meet me at the FedEx office so you can sign these 18 pages. I told her what happened. And uh, I can just drop them in FedEx. Well, I get a phone call on my way out the door, because you know, that's a long trip, so I got to get my coffee ready and everything. I got too much stuff in my hand. So I get in the car, I'm on the phone the whole way to the FedEx office, 40 minutes away. I'm still on the phone. I reached over to get my FedEx package. Where do you think it was? On the counter. By my coffee pot. So now I got to tell this lady, don't come to FedEx, because I ain't got your stuff. I went back home. But by now, I can't have her way to FedEx, so you go on home. So she went on home to Crowley. And I went home and got the package, then drove to Crowley. It was raining like cats and dogs. We had a storm. Yep. But I had to get to Crowley. If anybody know those little towns down there, it is dark. Yep. And in a storm, I was lost. But I, had to, I just started laughing because it, I had to find the humor <laughs> in it or I was going to be crying. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I don't mind telling you this. My price to go to crowd, it was $150. Not enough. Uh, I didn't get nothing because by the time I got back to a FedEx office, it was after the cutoff. So the next day, I couriered, couriered it to Plato. I didn't make no money. But guess what? I had a satisfied customer. Mm -hmm. Got to have a satisfied customer. I didn't make no money. I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, fellas, for letting me share. Thank you for sharing, Liz. But, you know, and that's uh, good that the way Liz handled that is you do want a satisfied customer because especially for you guys that uh, don't do this notary signing agent, um, it's very competitive. <laughs> you know, so they don't mind if you catch an attitude about having to fix the error because they're just going to move on to the next notary and then the next notary could be somebody like Liz who is willing to go that extra mile to ensure that you know her reputation stays intact and that she does a, a professional job because there's a lot I mean in Texas we got almost half a million notaries they're not all active you know doing you know notary signing agent work but still, you know, once they learn about it, they're like, mm, I'm already a notary. So all I have to do is go that next step to start doing this. So it's very competitive out there. So you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. And that was a great list. Also, uh, going back to missing signatures and initials, you want to make sure that people don't initial places that they're not supposed to. Have you ever had a signer that wants to initial every page? Even though it's not a place there for them initial, don't let them do it. If you can avoid it, take the pen away from them or something. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let them do it, because that's just something extra that you have to worry about. Yeah, did I say that? Create a cheat sheet for signers. <laughs> Who asked me that? What I can do is I can email it to you. Because actually I got it from somebody else. So I didn't want to claim it as my own. <laughs> you know, I mean, I come up with good ideas every now and then, but that wasn't my good idea. So I can tell you what is on the cheat sheet is the signer's, uh, the signer's name and their initials and the date of the signing. Because that's everything that they need when they're signing the documents. And they always forget, you know, what's today's date. So you have it right there in front of them. How they should be signing their names, the how they should initial, and what today's date is. And it just makes it easier, it makes the signing go smoother, and it makes you look more professional too, like you're prepared for this signing. And people like to see their name in print. They really do. Okay, responsibilities. So, we got to make sure that the signers sign and initial all required areas 
And uh, if a signature or initial is missed, then we know that it's our fault. And I already talked about how fierce the NSA competition is here in Texas and other places. Okay, error number four is in incorrect signatures and initials. So we talked about the missing signatures and, and initials, but we also come across incorrect signatures and initials. A lot of times, uh, most of the signing packages that you're gonna receive, you're gonna have lender documents and title company documents mixed in there. So they're coming from two different sources. So rarely are you gonna have documents that just came from one place. They're gonna come from different sources. So a lot of times when they're coming from these different sources, the names are going to be different. They're gonna be the same names, but it might be John J. Smith from the lender. The lender did all the lender documents and John J. Smith. However, the title company did all the documents in John James Smith. So when the signer is signing the title documents, they're gonna to have to sign John James Smith. When they're signing the lender documents, they're gonna to have to sign John J. Smith. And they're probably used to just signing John Smith. So you have to make sure that they're signing the documents correctly. So don't brush them. You know, look, look at the document and make sure you point out, okay, this is how you're gonna sign this document and this is how you're gonna initial this document. A lot of times, especially when their whole name is there, John James Smith, they get kind of irritated because most people don't sign their name their full name and they'll tell you, well, I never signed my name like this. Well, this time in order to close this loan, this is how you're gonna have to sign. And just make sure that you pay attention to that because that is one of our responsibilities to make sure that those documents are signed properly. And a way too that I always, somebody has a question, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm new at this and I've only been doing this for about a month and haven't really done any uh, uh, notarizations as yet. But my, uh, my ultimate goal is to become a signing agent. So if the, the person's name is spelled wrong from the lender, what, how can you fix that or can you not? Well, it depends that? on the lender. What you do is you call the lender and say, hey, this person's name is spelled wrong on the documents. So the lender may give you permission to have the signer make corrections and spell their name correctly. Usually what they have the borrower do is cross out the incorrect spelled name and write out their, their name spelled correctly and put their initials next to it. Okay. Now, I've had occasions where uh, my very first signing I ever did as a brand new notary signing agent. I was so excited. It was out in a place way out, but I, was, I didn't even care because it was my first one. I said, I'm driving out there, I'm gonna do it. So I go out there, I walk in, I have my two sets of documents because you're supposed to have two sets of documents, one to leave with them and one to have them signed. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I got my cheat sheet, I got my notary log. I mean, I got everything, I'm ready. So we sit down at the table and we start off with the wife because it's two signers. So this was a second wife. And uh, she looked at the documents. She was like, I ain't signing these. <laughs> I was like, why? She said, it has his first wife's name on here. I said, oh, okay. But his first wife and this wife had the same first name. Oh, wow. They only had different middle initials. And so since the first wife's middle initial was on the documents and not her middle initial, you know, the signing, um, the title company said she can cross it out and initial it. She was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and this was sorry. my first signing. Oh, sorry. 
And so, you know, if they don't want to make the, if the signer doesn't want to make the corrections, they don't have to. They don't have to. I, I start packing my stuff up. <laughs> I had to leave. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, well, why don't you just tell them what your first name is? H. I just want y'all to hear that. What? Uh-huh. H. And you don't want to sign, so you don't have to. Yeah, you can't make anybody sign. Yeah, so they had to redo the documents. had names like, uh, I have JR, which is one of my uncles, and, and Uncle P, his, it is P. And so it, back in the day, some people named their children just those letters. She ain't yeah. back in the day, she twin. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mama just getting lazy spelling. <laughs> She my friend, I can pick on her. <laughs> no, I said I could. Yeah. I just met her this morning. <laughs> okay, so if you are unsure about how a um, designer should sign, check with the hiring party also. But you can't, you can't make them sign if they don't want to sign. You can do like Professor Closen said and just annotate it in your journal. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to share an experience. I, um, my name is Luz Torres. I went to an auction, and it was held at the courthouse. You know, it's one of those auctions where they're selling, uh, bidding, people are bidding on properties. There's an investor. There was an investor that came in, and he bought nine properties, and they had assigned me to him. And this is one of the first times I started uh, my notary business. Um, typically, like you had mentioned, you're supposed to print two sets of documents. I had printed only one set, but I knew my instructions so well that I, I just had to memorize. I met the person at a coffee shop. I had all the deeds with me. And then he um, tells me, let me see the deeds. And in the instructions, it specifically said blue ink. And I knew it. So I was writing down his name on the log and, and so forth. And he tells me, let me see the deeds. He sees them, and he signed them all in black ink. And that was like, oh my gosh. And I only had one set. So then I tell him, you know what? I, I'm going to have to go back to my office, and I need to do this right. But I initially, I called the person who hired me. She started yelling at me, but I knew I could fix this. The guy tells me, which I didn't like, he tells me, sorry, honey, I have to leave. I need to go catch a plane. I don't know what you're going to do. So then he just left me there standing with the deeds. I called my boss again. She yelled at me, which I had it coming. And then I went ahead and scanned them to her. And then after that day, she didn't call me. And I don't know what happened. I just know that I broke that relationship and it was something so simple from printing the two sets which I overlooked which I didn't think it was going to be a big deal because I knew the color of ink and I knew everything I needed to follow um, that was my mistake and I learned the difference well, learn between blue that. and black mm -hmm. I differ it um, I always tell this this quote um, what is an expert an expert somebody who's done all the mistakes I'm not an expert yet because I haven't done them all, but I've come very close. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, because that's a, it's easy to make that mistake. And that's why I try to make sure that also when I'm doing any type of closing and I printed the document, I have, I'm in control of those documents until that signing is complete. Because it can just go, go haywire real easy. Yes, ma'am. I can't see where she is. This is just more informational. Mm -hmm. Do you get the documents beforehand? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, so, the, uh, so the documents the are hiring a, the hiring entity is going to most likely email you the documents, and then you're responsible for printing the documents, and you're going to print two sets. You're going to print a set for the borrowers to sign, and also a set to leave with the borrowers. Okay, but the they're going to sign both sets. No, no they're no, just going to they're sign only going to sign one. You'll be there forever. It's not bad enough. Right. You have to <laughs> yeah, just trying to get because it sounds very interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you learn all of that when you go through your training. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So again, it's our, respons it's our responsibility to make sure that the signatures and initials are completed. I put incorrectly. Completed correctly. That's my mistake. I do make mistakes. Okay. Another error, and they talked about, Kathleen and Susie talked about this earlier, and Dr. Uh, Professor Closen talked about this, the incorrect, the incorrect completion of notarial certificates. One thing about doing the notary closing is that you're going to get documents from all over the United States. You're not going to necessarily be working with just Texas documents. So, you have to really pay attention to those notarial certificates to make sure that you're following the rules and regulations that govern Texas notary publics. So if you have to make some changes, you need to know what type of changes to make. Uh, and if you, don't, if you don't understand, if you're not sure about what you're doing as a notary yet, then you're not ready to start doing the loan closings because you just can't afford to mess up on these documents. I mean, it's just, when somebody is purchasing a home, it's usually one of the largest purchases anybody makes in a lifetime. And so there's a lot of emotions and everything tied to this. You don't know how long that person has been waiting to uh, go through the loan process, know how many people they've talked to, how long this had dragged out. And not, a lot of times, you're the only person they have physically seen. Everything else has been done through the telephone or online. So when you come, I know I've gone, showed up to people's house to do closings, and um, they open the door and they like, Where's everybody else at? Because they talk to yeah. so many different people. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's just me. You know, I'm the one that's going to do the, the loan closing. And, you know, you explain to them how the process works, how the process is going to work. Because if not, if they had a hard time getting that loan approved and they think you are part of that <laughs> loan process, you're going to get attitude out the yang yang. How many people experience that? Oh, when you first walk through there and they start telling you about everything they went through. So you have to keep that in mind too. Phyllis? Yes, ma'am. Could I just interject right there too? Uh-huh. Because it is a large one of the largest purchases that they will have made in their lifetimes and they're nervous anyway. I always look at it as my job to make them feel comfortable for that closing. Now, if they're ranting about what has happened through that loan process, I politely put my pen down on the table, I put my hands on the table, I look at them and say, I understand, I understand. And I let them vent. Once they are done venting, because if I don't let them vent, it's going to take longer for me to get through that signing. So I give them five minutes to vent, and then they're okay. And then I say, I'm here now, and I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> and that works. It works really well. When you're doing all of this printing, what is the best printer to you? I, I, I can't hear you. I, you got the mic. <laughs> <laughs> What is the best printer to use? I know you like need a dual tray, but I mean it's a, it's a 
it's a personal preference. I like I like HP printers. Me too. You know, some people like brother printers. So it's just a personal preference. You know, it's yes, going it to save you so much more time if you have a dual tray. Okay. I'm telling you, it's okay. going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so dual tray. Yes, sir. Do you use Absolutely. it? You know, when I first started out doing this, I was only, I would swear by laser printers. But now inkjet printers are so good these days that really you can get away with using an inkjet printer. I just bought an inkjet printer the other day with an HP. And it was, it's really good. I mean, it spits out those uh, uh, copies. And um, also they have this uh, HP ink program that are automatically you know, read your, your printer and know when you low on ink and stuff. They're really making us lazy, right? And so you don't even have to order the, the ink. It automatically comes to you. Yes? I'll bring it back. You can use ink yet. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to use laser. It's a lady in the back. We got, we got one over here first. She didn't raise her hand. She just told okay. me to get over here. <laughs> So. Okay. okay, my question is a lot of my lenders are now doing electronic signatures, so I'm not having to print out trees. Are you seeing that more, more of a trend now than printing out hard copies and sending them out? I mean, I've You're heard like, about no. it, but I haven't done a whole bunch well, of well, electronic I do, I do more corporate um, real estate, oh, so okay. they're doing a lot more electronic because it's it's just too much. Yeah. So yeah, these are the ones I'm talking about are mostly residential. Yeah. I'm just curious if you have a Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Yes, I've seen that. But some title companies, some lenders don't want you to hand the documents on the CD. They want the, they want the signers to have a paper copy. It would be so much easier if we could do it, you know, with the CD. But then sometimes those paper copies come in handy, you know, if you make a mistake. Uh -huh. You can correct that mistake right there. Phyllis, I have a quick question for you. Do you remember the name, the model of the printer you bought? Because if you're using it, that means I should probably be using it. So what are you using? Do you remember the model of the HP printer you purchased? The one I just bought? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's a HP, I want to say an 8670. It's a dual tray. Is it inkjet or is it's it? An inkjet. 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 It's an inkjet. It's an inkjet. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, And they had it on sale at Office Depot. So it was like a $400 printer, and I got it for like $270. But Phyllis, huh. could I just interject? Um, when we're doing, also read your instructions, because sometimes your hiring company will tell you they want laser printer or ink. Them. I've never seen anybody say they want inkjet. But just make sure you're following your instructions. Okay, I haven't seen that, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's not to say that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We're up, our time is up already. What? Oh. It's ten minutes. Two. Okay. Oh. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so we talked about the responsibility, uh, the notary stamp. So now, when you when you're stamping. Uh, when you're notarizing the signature on those documents, you got to make sure that your entire stamp comes out. And you got to make sure that you're not stamping over any words or anything like that. You need to be able to read it and you need to have, be able to make copies of it. So if you accidentally just halfway stamp it, then what you should do is X out that, put your initials, and then stamp it again. Or if you really want to be professional, get the copy, take the borrower's copy, and restamp it. Because you want to make sure that you can read every, everything, especially if you, uh, when you're doing the, um, the deed of trust, any type of warranty deeds, because those have to be recorded.
Uh, so we talked about that. Overbooking. Okay, I am very guilty of doing this in the past. But after you make enough mistakes, you realize that it's not even worth the money overbooking. Because we get paid uh, based on volume, how much work we do. That's how much money we're gonna make, right? So it's very tempting when we get that phone call to, and somebody calls and they have a quick sign-in to do, because they always say it's a quick sign-in. <laughs> they do, they always say, this is gonna be a quick sign-in, you're gonna be in and out. And then when they send you the documents, it's 300 pages. But anyway, what you wanna do is make sure that you have enough time between signings to get to your next signing and make sure you have enough time to spend with your signer. You don't want to be rushing them through the signing because you've got another signing to go through. That is so not professional. So take your time. Because after that person finished signing, you're still going to sit there and you're going to go through all the documents to make sure that you didn't miss anything. You have all the signatures, all the initials. Okay, and you stamped everything, and you stamped it correctly. So it's a lot of things you have to do. So you don't want to rush when you're doing something like that. And also, you never know when you're going to come across somebody when you're doing a loan signing that's a reader. Mm. <laughs> Everybody has had a reader at least, at least one time. So a reader is somebody that wants to read everything. So imagine you have a 300 page loan package and that person wants to read the entire package. And especially if it's a refinance, you can say, okay, well, you're gonna get three days to change your mind, right? And if it's a reader, you tell them that, they're gonna say, okay, and keep on reading because that's what they want to do. They want to read everything before they sign. And you don't have any choice. You can't tell somebody, well, I got an appointment in another half an hour I need to get to. You were hired to work with that particular borrower. So you have to finish that signing. So you never know when that's going to happen. Also, questions. Some people, when you go there to do the closing, they're going to question every single document. So every document you come to, you're going to have to stop and either call the lender or call the title company. It's just the way it is. And you can't rush it. So you want to make sure that you make allowances for that. It's going to be, if you leave enough wiggle room between each assignment, it's going to be less stressful for you. It's going to be easier on your health and you're going to be less prone to make mistakes. Okay, another error is a lack of communication. So some signing companies and title companies complain that the notary signing agents do not answer their telephones. I know that's not true. Everybody answers their phone, right? How many people, if you're in a signing and you get a phone call, you answer the phone? How many people say it's okay to answer the phone if you're in a signing? How many people say they don't answer the phone when they're in the signing? Do not. Do not. Unless what? Unless what? I almost forgot to bring it. Oh, because I have a big mouth. <laughs> I don't need, I don't think I need the microphone. Um, it, it, I always keep it like this. So if I see maybe it's a title or I'm expecting someone um, from title or, or a real estate agent, um, I don't answer any other calls though. If only if I know somebody's gonna call or hey, that looks like the zip code that I'm in. I'll kind of like really quickly, but no, 
What do you say, Phyllis? I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, what do you do? Me, you no, it's a, it? it's a personal preference. Okay. For me, I answer my phone. Okay. okay. I know y'all throw stuff at me, whatever. <laughs> but, yes. When you're in your closings, you even answer when your I'm phone? in my closings, I answer my phone. I do. Now I'm not going to stay on there. It's going to be like real, real quick. And I tell them, you know, when I first get there, when I'm introducing myself, that my phone may ring, and I'll answer it. It's going to be real quick. That's what I'm start doing now. And I do that. So that's just me. I don't like to miss phone calls. Huh? Yeah, I let them know up front that I'm going to answer my phone. Because I know if I don't answer my phone, they're just going to go to the next notary. That's the nature of our business. Okay. Uh, also, um, a good thing to do is if you do get a phone call from the title company or the signing service while you're in there with your borrowers, I always put it on speakerphone. Speaker. So we all can hear the same yep. thing at the same time. If they have any questions, they can ask the questions and we all hear the answers, yep. the same answers. It just makes it easier. Uh, another NSA error is giving opinion or advice, and Professor Closen talked about this, how we shouldn't give advice or give our opinion. How many times have you been in a signing, especially on a refi, and uh, the signer will ask you, is this a good interest rate? <laughs> They'll ask you if this is a good interest rate. or. Uh, what do you think I should do? Should I sign? <laughs> I've had people ask me that. Yeah. You know, and we're not there to advise them on what to do. We're just there to make sure that they sign the documents correctly. Okay, so I'm just about out of time. It was my long story that threw you short, huh? <laughs> so just make sure that you don't uh, provide any advice and even if you think their interest rate is too high, don't tell them, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> okay, last, uh, last uh, error is lack of professionalism. And one of the things, one of the complaints I get, especially from the uh, banks, the lenders at the banks and stuff, is how some notaries show up um, very casually dressed. <laughs> I'll put it like that. So we're professionals, so you want to keep it business casual. It's okay to be business casual, but you don't want to show up to a, to a signing and flip flops and cutoffs and all too much skin showing. You need to keep it professional. And we all, most of us know that, but you'll notice that a lot of times when you get your instructions now, they also will mention how you should dress when you go to your signings. Okay, and that's all I have. Any other questions, comments? Oh, more questions. Oh, ooh, I forgot again. Uh, it just depends on the, uh, on the, on the service that's hiring you. Sometimes you get them the same day. Sometimes you get them an hour before you're supposed to go out. Yeah. It just depends. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know anything about this uh, coming to the house until my dad passed away and they sent someone to the house for me to close and because I bought my sister out. The guy wouldn't shut up. <laughs> he went on and on and on. Asked if he could tour the house, that he was very impressed with the design and wanted to know who built it. Asked me all kinds of questions about the house. Mind you, we had just finished the estate sale and my sister had just packed up and took her stuff out the weekend before. And I couldn't get this guy out of the house. Oh, wow. 
So it's just a what not to do when you go to a closing. Well, thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you, fellas.